Welcome to the first edition of Hammer Horror in Order here on our YouTube channel. I'm Josh. I'm joined here with Donnie <laughs> and the Professor Smoke. What's up? And the reason we're uh, laughing here is because we've had multiple takes here and there was some uh, some silliness afoot. But we are from the All American Spook Show podcast. Uh, Will is a part of the show. If you listen to our podcast, you'll hear his voice, but you will rarely see his face here on these hear programs on the youtube channel but this is our next new series we you know we've been promising some new cool stuff here on the youtube channel i think we've delivered with grindhouse gutter and we've kind of reintroduced spook show rewind here on the channel so now this is a new one hammer horror in order and it really it's kind of self-explanatory basically we're going to be going through the uh the hammer films archives and watching all their horror movies and their thrillers and stuff like that uh, over over time, and we're going to be watching them in order, in order in which they were released. And we're going to be starting here today with the Quatermass Experiment, a.k.a. The Creeping Unknown from 1955. And, and it was released here in the U.S. as The Creeping Unknown. So you might see it as either title here in the States. We're, we're approaching this from a perspective of Donnie hasn't watched many Hammer Horror movies. He's watched some, but not many, right? No. And Smoke and I have probably watched more than he has but nowhere near the you know not even half the catalog much less at best what maybe a, a quarter of it smoke you would say oh well, yeah as we get to go as we get going through these things i mean you made a list of kind of what they're what they were and i think they came up with about well not including tv series right it was like 72 and that includes the newer movies that were released as when they the studio started back up in the yeah. mid late 2000s or so yeah we're going to be including all that stuff although it's going to be a long time before we get to get to yeah, that yeah <laughs> we're going to be including all that stuff and uh we had at least three tv series that they produced in the early 80s one in the 70s and then two in the early early to mid 80s and we're going to be talking about those once we eventually get there as well because basically they were done hammer films was done making horror films pretty much by what 1978 1979 yeah yeah somewhere around in there i think to the to the devil a daughter i want to say that was one of their later one of the last ones i believe from um, that classic era yeah i'm looking forward to this because uh none of us really have watched a lot of these things so if nothing else it will be interesting to kind of experience a lot of this stuff together for the first time now we're not going to take the deep dive that we normally take in our podcast episodes because the intent here is to kind of hit the highlights give our kind of consensus rating and we're going to have a hammer scale. We're going to give out hammers toward the end on this one. This is the first time I had seen it. Uh, Donnie Smoke, what about you guys? Yeah, first time for me, first watch. Yeah, me as well. This is uh, the first Hammer horror film, and I haven't never seen it. I've seen Quatermass in the Pit once we get down to that one a little bit further down, but this is the only, uh, well, that's the only Quatermass film I've seen. It actually produced movies starting all the way back to 1935. But for whatever reason, the first time, this is the first time 20 years later that they dip their toes in the, in the horror pool. Now I would imagine that's probably because here in America, Universal and some other companies had already kind of beat them to the punch, you know, as far as horror is concerned. And I would imagine, I, I think historically around this time period, horror had kind of taken a back seat a little bit because of World War II, you know, and real life horror, right? Mm. Horror movies yeah, weren't there was popular. A, there was a surge in sci-fi you know, atomic era sci-fi because of that cold war anxiety and fears. I think sci-fi with horror tones sort of took the forefront when it came to that type of fantasy cinema. And, and this is actually a shining example of both of those things put together, horror and sci-fi, something along the lines later on that will come out like alien, you know, that would come play with those types of, uh, the two genres and, and tie think, in elements with both genres. I think that's d definitely what you get here is this definitely feels like the fifties because it's, 
during the 50s, a lot of the movies, I haven't seen a, 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 a shit ton of movies from that time period, but what I have seen, they're always like a monster movie mixed with sci-fi. Almost every one of them, right? Something yeah, to do with and, and Atomic Age. Sometimes, yeah, Atomic Age stuff. And sometimes they'll be really uh, dark. You know, in other words, the end of humanity type thing. Again, that's that Cold War anxiety and fear. Or sometimes they'll be very uh, positive and uplifting. Or there'll be a thing, a combination where something happens that, you know, people on Earth think it's going to be terrible, but it ends up that they're here for good. Like, uh, uh, what was the one? Uh, the, the whole Klaatu, Verat, and Nikto line comes from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The day the Earth stood still, maybe. I believe yeah. that's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. where they, the aliens come to Earth and they're, every, of course, humans think that they're here to destroy us, but really they're not. So, <laughs> so yeah, at any rate, whether it's for good or bad that they come here, it's generally a dark tone because of the uh, Cold War stuff. Now, we're not going to go deep in the, we're not going to give out any spoilers or anything like we normally do on the podcast, but I will read a, uh, w- one of our tra- newer traditions over on the podcast is to read a plot summary on IMDb. So I'm, I'm going to choose one because there's a few here. And this one was uh, uh, put up by Claudio Carvola over on IMDb. In the countryside of London, a rocket crashes on a farm and Professor Bernard Quatermass and Scotland Yard Inspector Lomax arrive in the spot. The rocket was launched by Professor Quatermass and the astronauts Victor Caroon Green and Raquelbum. However, only Karun is found very sick in the cabin. He is transported to a private clinic to stay under observation despite the protest of his wife, Miss Judith Karun. She bribes a nurse to bring Karun to her and she finds that he is transforming into a monster. Karun escapes, killing people and animals during his metamorphosis while the Scotland Yard is hunting him down and Dr. Quatermass discovers that his process is an alien invasion. So yeah, th- this one, it's a pretty interesting flick. Um, like I said, I'm not deeply uh, uh rooted in this type of movie but i've seen my fair share of these type of movies and uh i, I think at times this one there there are spots in this movie that drags a little bit but i think overall it's a pretty it's a pretty enter- entertaining flick for this type of movie what do you think donnie yeah yeah i would i would say the same i mean you know it kept my attention like you mentioned it it dragged a little bit but you know, for the time period. I mean, I mean, it's pretty solid. What do you What do you think about it, Smug? Just on the surface. Yeah, like so, as we said, I haven't seen seen quite a bit of Hammer films, that, but most of those are in the monster variety of like the Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman movies and whatnot. Uh, I've only seen a handful of their, I guess you call it Cold War sci-fi type movies. This one, as we mentioned, I hadn't seen yet before, before we watched it for this. But uh, I think it's kind of typical of that time period of. Like you said, there's going to be a lot of these movies to modern sensibilities kind of drag a little bit in places, just the nature of the way they were written, shot and everything. And, you know, and then they'll have moments of uh, high action stuff going on, whether it be creature stuff, uh, outer space stuff, whatever the case may be, that'll kind of pull you back into it. And then so there, there's moments where it does lull. Now you get used to those, I guess, the more of these you see. And I've seen quite a few, not Hammer necessarily related, but the 50s atomic horror sci-fi type movies as I mentioned like this island earth or uh uh day the earth stood still etc war of the worlds those types of things and so yeah i definitely i think holds its own against those types now some of those are a bit more <laughs> maybe more grander as far as this island earth or or war of the worlds or whatever maybe it's not quite at that level but uh but i think it still holds up with most of the other atomic age sci-fi horror films that were going on in this time in the 50s it was directed by val guest and it stars brian don Levy. Jack Warner and Marja Dean. Um, it was based on a uh, BBC serial uh, that had just came out a couple years prior to that by the same name, the, the Quatermass Experiment, except instead of an X, it was spelled EX Experiment. Mm. And uh, I, I think I saw somewhere where apparently they they titled this with the X Experiment because, you know, they give out X certificates. They give out like, oh, yeah. you, you know how we have PG rated R, stuff like mm-hmm. that. In the UK, they have certificates. They're like, you know, and 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 something that's on the uh, more controversial scale, I guess, would get an X certificate. So they kind of leaned in on that and threw the X in the title. Same thing with the, not the sequel, but the next movie, X the Unknown. <laughs> it was released uh, about a year or so later here in the US as a double feature with uh, a, a, not a Hammer film, but another uh, kind of classic horror movie of the time, The Black Sleep. Which that one had like one of those. It's one of those who's who, you know, Lon Chaney, um, Basil Rathbone, you know, John Carradine, Bella Lugosi had a bunch of you know big horror stars in it of the time. Uh, so that was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I think this one was very successful in the UK. 
I'm sure here it probably had in the States, it was mixed results, but this was probably one of, if not the most successful movies that Hammer had released at the time and really led to, you know, what we're going to get into as, as years go by. Yeah. Pretty much pushed them towards the horror genre after this, yeah. after this movie. Yeah. Very influential. Uh, I think it kind of caught him, caught him by surprise a little bit because that, that caused them to, you know, reshuffle their thinking and uh, just it's like, well, okay. <laughs> you know. That worked. Let's keep doing it. Yep. <laughs> Let's make XD Unknown and Quatermass yeah. Mass Two, and <laughs> yeah. and away we go. Oh, and speaking of that Quatermass Mass BBC serial that you'd mentioned, they shot that, or they they it went live to TV as things did a lot of times with those serials, and uh, they only recorded the first two episodes, and the rest of the six episodes, so I guess four episodes, it was six episodes total, I believe. So there's like four episodes after the first two that were either never recorded or been, have been lost to time, but uh, it's incomplete. Unfortunately, you can only watch the first two episodes. I think, And Donnie might have some more information on this. Wasn't there something about uh, 2005? They did something else with it, Donnie? Yeah, it was a, uh, it was a TV movie. Uh, it was a remake uh, that they did. I'm not sure who was in it. So yeah, like this is based on that series. Title. Right. Yeah, it's, it's funny that the right. guy that they brought in to be Professor Quatermass uh, was an American. Brian Donald, yeah. and, and I think that was basically just to appeal to the American audience. And like I said, I I don't know how many movies Quatermass goes into. I, you know, I don't know if he went beyond Hammer. Well, obviously for the 2005, that probably wasn't that wasn't Hammer. But uh, I know that he was a it was a popular, you know, based on this movie. Well, based on the serial, then based on this movie and some offshoots of it, he became a popular character. But I just don't know how many total movies he's been in as a character. And there was some controversy behind this movie too, right? When it got released, didn't that weren't there some incidents <laughs> that happened? Yeah, not exactly yeah, Terrifier two or anything, but you know, where uh, people were <laughs> yeah. passing out in the theaters or anything. Actually, quite worse. Um, there was a nine year old kid who uh, um, was it. He had a ruptured artery after uh, watching a double billing of uh, uh, another another film and. Uh, this movie and his his parents um, they sued the theater and United Artists over you know wrongful death because of I, I guess it was wrongful death um, is what they sued for. So they're um, they're attributing it straight up to like their kid died because he watched yeah. this movie is what they're saying. What they said yeah here basically yeah and I think that's the only that's the I mean if you I don't know what the medical condition if you had whatever the case I think that's the only death from fear of watching a horror movie that's ever been recorded if you count that as you know like, again we don't know the whole story of whether he had any medical conditions going into it but whatever the case yeah. they deemed it to be the one and only time that somebody has died of quote-unquote fear while watching a, a horror movie and that's that's not funny at all there's there's no that sucks. that's not yeah. laughing that's horrible but um that you you could see where they they might want would want to use that yeah, as you like, see you know, where, like, yeah, because yeah. I mean, you know, cutthroat, uh, you know, Hollywood producers would be like, we're going to use that. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. This movie actually killed someone, you know. And, and you know, a lot of times, and I don't know that this had anything to do with it, but you know, later they did start. They didn't use any like, you know, somebody died while watching. They didn't use that, but they would use certain wording that would say, "Doctors will be on hand in case there's any, you know, anybody in dies of fear or anybody has a you know, aneurysm or a heart attack from this movie or whatever." They they played on that before not on this incident yeah but yeah. on you know playing up that medical aspect of uh of fear from watching the horror movie but you could see though if you put yourself in the shoes of uh, especially of a kid but in that time period you're 1955 1956 wherever that was i'm not sure if that was in the uk or here in the states or somewhere else where that happened at but uh you could see where this movie would certain aspects of it would scare the hell out of you because you're you're not desensitized like we are, you know. Like, oh yeah, no, I've messed no. up movies like the Terrifier <laughs> movies or the Sadness or something like that. Where you know yeah. we're just, we're depraved now compared to this <laughs> stuff. But you could see where you know if you're not used to that kind of thing, this would scare the hell out of you. Like where you know the guy basically the victims in the movie get get their blood sucked out and they're and they're just like when they roll them over, their eyes are you know their eyes like sunk out of their head and they're they're kind of dried up a little bit like a raisin, you know, because they've been sucked dry kind of, you know, like you, you could see where that would scare the hell out of you. And then of course 
the big monster at the end. We've been desensitized at the point we are now in 2022. Definitely, we've been desensitized to all kinds of aspects of violence and cinema and whatnot. But yeah, people back then during the original Universal runs, even earlier in the 30s, were passing out from fear in the theater. And, uh, you know, people kind of laugh about that now. They think, oh, you know, you watch Dracula and you're like, how, how could somebody think this was all that scary? But I mean, it's all relative to the time that period. time period yeah. which yeah that people haven't seen that type of thing yet so i guess it's time to get into our our uh ha- our hammer ratings our uh, not quite patented hammer rating system now <laughs> this will be a scale that will like like we said off the top will probably kind of skew one way or another eventually mm-hmm. once we finally get into more of these type of movies so like a year from now we'll probably feel a little bit differently but where we sit right now we kind of uh put our heads together before the show and we came up with a consensus rating of two and a half hammers for this one so i think that's fair enough to say that we recommend it uh you should go seek it out go buy you a copy of it um it, it it's fun to watch just know that it's a movie it's a it's a black and white horror movie from 1955 so there are going to be some parts that are going to drag a little bit like smoke said compared to modern cinema right but yeah. there's still a lot of fun to be had with it i'd yeah. say if you haven't seen it before Go ahead. I mean, definitely if you're a fan of atomic horror and atomic sci-fi type movies and you haven't seen this one, you'll love it. If you aren't necessarily a fan of those types of things, but you you like some of Hammer's later movies, I'd say check it out. You may not you may not find as much to love in this as you do in Curse of Frankenstein or Horror of Dracula, but I think you'll still enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. Excellent point. I mean, I couldn't really say any more than that. So w- we move on to the next here in the Hammer Horror in Order series. And next up will be X. The Unknown from 1956 actually released uh, wide in the UK, November 5th of 1956. Uh, I'll read the very, very brief synopsis. A radioactive mud-like creature terrorizes a Scottish village. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next installment. Uh, hopefully you guys watch this. Uh, uh, make sure to uh, comment down below, you know, if you've seen this movie, uh, you know, like us, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell to be notified when we upload the next Grindhouse Gutter or Spook Show Rewind or or uh latest episodes of the podcast i mean we put up a ton of stuff yeah. tons of stuff here on the youtube channel so uh for will who couldn't be with us donnie professor smoke i'm josh we're from the all-american spook show podcast and we'll see you next time on hammer horror in order